What is up, Sopranos fans? Kino here. I'm back with another Soprano log. Um, this time we're looking at Season 2, Episode 8, Full Leather Jacket. There's three main plots going on in this episode. I'll knock the first one out of the way quickly. Meadow is deciding where she wants to go to college. Um, she applied to a bunch of different schools, um, but the one that she's really excited about is Berkeley in California. She wants to um, get out of New Jersey, get away from her family, and um, she wants to be part of the culture out there in California. Now, her parents are upset by this. They don't want her to go that far from home. They want her close by, um, still under their control. When Carmela sees that she gets uh, a letter from Berkeley um, asking her to send her some forms, I think that's what it is, she throws the letter in the trash uh, because she doesn't want her to go. And by throwing the letter in the trash, um, she won't get accepted because she didn't respond in time. Uh, but later she fishes the mail out of the trash and gives it to Meadow. Um, though Meadow can see that there's a stain on the envelope. So she can tell that something, her mother did something to it. Um, but Carmela takes a different approach. So she she goes to her neighbor, Jeannie Cusimano. And Jeannie's sister, uh, her twin sister actually, played by the same actress, um, works as a lawyer. And she went to Georgetown, which is one of Meadow's schools. Carmela asks Jeannie to ask her sister to write a letter of recommendation. Uh, this makes Jeannie kind of uncomfortable. She knows that the sister doesn't want to do it because she doesn't know Meadow. And the sister already wrote a letter for, um, you know, this underprivileged kid from the projects who really deserves to go to Georgetown. So the sister declines and then Carmela goes to there herself and basically threatens her. You know, she's acting all sweet, but... The sister knows who she is and who her husband is. So there's that threat, that implication that if she doesn't write the letter, um, something might go wrong for her. Um, so Carmela successfully intimidates her into writing the letter and, yeah, basically making sure that Meadow gets to go to the college that Carmela wants her to go to. Um, so Carmela is pretty gangster about this, you know, college stuff. But that's the that's the C plot going on this episode. Um, the more important things going on are, number one... Silvio and Paulie go to Richie and they tell him that he needs to build a ramp for Beansy. Remember, Richie paralyzed Beansy um, a couple episodes ago and they want him to build a ramp for Beansy as a way to kind of make it up. Uh, Beansy has a lot of friends and this will be a good gesture um, to start patching that relationship up. He refuses. Um, you know, he doesn't want to take orders from anyone. He's a captain now, um, he's got an attitude. Uh, but eventually he relents when Tony basically orders him to. Um, he also gives Tony a jacket. It's the jacket. It's this leather jacket he took from uh, this guy Rocco DeMeo, who he you know beat up and drove out of town. Um, and he gives it to Tony as a gift. He's really excited about it. Tony really doesn't like the jacket, um, but he has to take it anyway to be polite. Um, and I think this really is a power move on Richie's part. You know, he's saying on one hand. You know, I can dress you if I want. I can make you wear the clothes I want you to wear. Um, he's trying to assert himself over Tony. And there's another hidden message there, I think, that he's like, I beat up the last guy who wore this jacket and now you're wearing it. Don't forget that I'm tougher than you. Um, so it's a really it's a dominating move on Richie's part. But later on, he sees that Tony has given the jacket to his maid's husband um, basically just, you know, donated it. And Richie's really insulted by this. He's really hurt. And, you know, he slumps away. And, and we can see that, you know, his anger towards Tony is only growing and growing. Um, so that's the first thing that happens. The second thing that's happening is um, Chris and his friends, uh, Matt and Sean, are breaking into some safes. Um, we get a little detail of Pussy got his start as a cat burglar. And that's where he gets the name Big Pussy because he's a you know, a fat guy and a pussy is in a, a cat, a cat burglar. But uh, Sh Matt and Sean really want to move up the ranks. Um, they try talking to Tony, um, but they fuck it up and, you know, he completely shuts them down. Um, they're further embarrassed later when Furio goes to collect the money they owe Tony um, and he demands an extra thousand dollars from them and basically makes fun of them. And they realize that they're nowhere. They're losers. They're at the bottom. And they decide that they need to do something drastic if they want to ever get respect. Um, so they decide that they're going to um, shoot Christopher. They ambush him outside this restaurant. 
Um, even though there's two of them and they have the element of surprise, these clowns can't even kill him. Um, they shoot Christopher, but he ends up killing one of them by shooting him in the head. Um, and then Matt escapes. Um, he goes to Richie for protection. They did it to get in good with Richie because Richie doesn't like Christopher. Um, but obviously, Richie is very pissed off by this. This is just putting him in danger of Tony now. Um, so he chases Matt away. These two are just complete idiots. They don't know what they're doing. They're wannabes. And now they've almost killed Christopher. Um, and Tony, at the end, uh, was just completely shocked that this happened to someone he loved. And there's an interesting note that um, this is the only episode that ever ends without music. Um, instead, we just hear Christopher's ventilator and his heart rate monitor. Um, so it's this really um, great sound design there. We're ending it just listening to Christopher hanging on to life. Um, and it creates this great sense of, of danger that he might not survive. Um, so really good episode. We're really starting to get into the end game here of the second season, setting up the conflicts between Tony and Richie. Um, setting up you know what happens to Christopher and Matt and how that's going to affect Tony but can't wait to continue on and stay tuned for the next soprano log coming soon <laughs>